Spices are a mystical thing in the kitchen. Straight up, without spices, a handful of world-famous dishes would cease to exist. I mean, wars have been fought over this stuff. People have died over spices. Massively long trade routes connecting the Eastern and Western worlds have been forged by man to ensure the trade of spices. Yeah, many of us know that the world of spices is pretty awesome, but that doesn't mean it's not confusing. How do I make sure my spices stay fresh? How do I organize them? How do I store them? And how the hell do I cook with them? These are all very valid, normal questions to ask, which is exactly why I'm making this video. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a much clearer clear understanding on how to work and cook with spices, dried herbs, and seeds. Okay, so I'd like to cover a decent amount about spices, so I decided to break the video up into components. First, let's start with how to buy spices. 90% of the time, I prefer to buy my spices whole rather than pre-ground. So for example, instead of buying ground coriander, I would buy coriander seed, then grind it myself. We'll talk more about that later. So yeah, I know, I get it. Grinding spices from scratch probably sounds like a lot of work, but hear me out. Whole spices keep much longer than the pre-ground ones, and when freshly ground and toasted, emit a much more powerful aroma than almost anything you can buy that's pre-ground. Though there are exceptions to the rule. I'll buy pre-ground spices that I use often to save me on time, but I try to only do this when I know that the spice has been ground within the past month or so. Trust me, it does make a difference. And it's probably best to buy pre-ground spices in small amounts, even if you use them often, because they do lose their spunk quite quickly. So I'm not gonna buy anything pre-ground that I rarely use. And it's also probably best to stay away from those little plastic containers of dried herbs and spices that you see at the grocery store. And that's really just because there's no way of telling how old they are when they've been ground, the, the real, really the quality and those spices also could have totally been irradiated or fumigated to prolong their shelf life. And really, those are just two methods used to make sure there's no harmful bacteria in your spices. Totally harmless practices if done properly, but they can degrade the quality of the spice and sort of leave a wonky flavor behind. Definitely don't recommend those. And as for dried herbs, I found that hardier herbs like thyme, rosemary, oregano keep and work better than soft dried herbs like chives, parsley, or cilantro. I don't know, to me, soft herbs kind of are awesome because of their fresh, delicate flavors, and when you dry them out, they just kind of get all weak and wimpy and dusty and just like, not that good. But yeah, that's just my personal opinion. I definitely opt to buy my soft herbs fresh, but you know, in a pinch, dried herbs are just fine. As for dried herbs, it's probably best to pluck your fresh herbs and let them dry out on the table or the counter over the next couple of days, and then sort of grind or pulverize them into a powder as you need them. And that goes without saying the fresher the better when it comes to dry herbs and spices. And the easiest and quickest way to tell if your dried herbs or spices are healthy is to just do a quick schnoz test, right? So really what that means is just give them a quick whiff, you know, open the jar, give them a smell. If they smell good, if they smell fresh like themselves, if they smell vibrant, you're good. But if they smell old, sort of dusty and sad, you know, definitely toss those. It's probably time to re-up on some fresh stuff. You may or may not have heard of it, but the phrase garbage in, garbage out is very real in the kitchen. If you're serious about cooking and really care about putting out great food, it's definitely in your best interest to source the best ingredients. It's always probably best to buy spices from a trusted source that really cares about what they do. Which is exactly why I always recommend the Spice House to anyone who's looking for good spices. This video totally is not sponsored by them. Their products are just always top shelf and they've never let me down. And just like you might seek out a good butcher or fishmonger, I definitely encourage you to seek out a solid local spice trader. Oh, and also a few of you have asked me what my favorite spices are. I hate those types of questions, but if I had to bring five spices with me, you know, that classic desert island trope, it would probably be these. And that's not necessarily because I think these spices are better than any of the other ones on my shelf. Really, it's because I believe that these spices create sort of a deep enough bench where I'd really be able to cook a lot of different things with. Okay, so now that you know how to cop Primo spices, let's talk about how to store them. If stored improperly, these spices that you spend your precious cheddar on could have their shelf life reduced drastically. Exposure to air makes the spices oxidize and lose quality quicker than if they were protected. So to ensure freshness, make sure you keep your spices, seeds, and dried herbs in an airtight environment or a little jar like this. I love these little mason jars. They are the perfect size and have this little rubber seal that helps trap everything in. That's a little rubber piece that keeps the air out there. Plus the uniformity and aesthetic of having your spices in orderly matching containers is just unexplainably satisfying. Yeah, I'm also a complete weirdo with that type of stuff, uh, but yeah. Just remember a suffocated spice is a healthy spice. Okay, the next point is something that I really wanna drive home. 
please, 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 please do not sit on your spices for too long. Spices are meant to be used, so use them. Old spices won't hurt you, probably. You're probably not gonna go to the ER because your mom sprinkled in some paprika that she got during the first Bush administration, but I also guarantee that if she used fresh paprika, the food would be noticeably better. So use your spices, people. As for organization, I like to use a label maker to keep things spiffy, but again, I'm a freak about this stuff, so if you have a tape and some Sharpie, that works just as fine too, and it's a lot cheaper. And to streamline my spice system, I like to keep likes with likes. This is pretty obvious, but for example, I keep spice blends with one another, I keep chili peppers and powders with one another, you know, warming spices together, you get the idea. And doing that really just helps me know where to look when I'm hunting for a specific ingredient. The spices that I buy a lot of, I do buy in bulk sometimes, and those live in little containers sort of tucked away out of sight so that I don't lose my mind. And same goes for bulkier items like dried mushrooms or big peppers. I keep those in an airtight environment, out of sight, tucked away, in a bin. Also a note to talk about, visibility. It's a really big topic when talking about spices. I do really dig these collapsible shelves here to help keep everything sort of in my line of sight, so I don't forget about anything. You know, don't want to neglect any one of my babies. Okay, so now that you're equipped with the knowledge on how to purchase and nurture healthy spices, let's talk about how to use them in the kitchen. I touched on this earlier, but the best way to use spices, in my opinion, is to buy them whole, toast them, and then grind them. I like to toast my spices in a dry pan over medium heat on the stove. And to do this, really, you're just gonna wanna keep them on the heat moving and sort of toast them until they're ever so slightly darkened and start to smell pretty vibrant. You can also totally toast your spices on a sheet tray in a low oven, but I prefer the stovetop method. Toasting your spices helps coax out some of their natural oils, which adds a lot of complexity and sort of a much more aromatic experience, uh, especially when you grind them freshly. I like to think of toasting spices and grinding them is sort of unlocking their true flavor, right? We're unlocking the spice. And there are many ways to grind whole spices. There are even little electric special machines that are made solely for the purpose of grinding spices, but you don't need that. You can totally just use an electric coffee grinder, you can use your blender, you can use like a hand crank mill, or you can just say, F it and go caveman style, which basically just means you put your spices in a bag and use a blunt object to get the job done, pound them out, crush them up a little bit. My favorite way to grind spices is with a mortar and pestle, which is just kind of like a stone bowl with a stone smashy thing. And I really dig this because it's a good way to be able to control the coarseness of your spice grind, right? So I can leave things chunky or I can bash them really smooth and make it powdery. But really, it's also just super satisfying to use. You gotta try it if you haven't. All right, so yeah, from there, once toasted and ground up, you're, you know, ready to use your spices. Throw them in a a braise, throw them in a long simmering, you know, stew or something like that. Maybe rub them on some meat that's destined for the smoker or the grill. You know, maybe fold some spices into a sauce, give it some more character. There are literally thousands of ways to use spices in the kitchen. One of my favorite ways to use spices is to add them to my basting butter when I, you know, baste a protein. Spices rubbed directly to a cutlet like a chicken breast or a pork chop can actually burn away. Don't get me wrong, a little char is fantastic and necessary. Uh, however, sometimes the heat of the skillet actually burns away the spice completely. To avoid this, what I'll do is I'll usually just season the cutlet up with some salt, toss it in a hot skillet with a little bit of oil, you know, make sure that the one side gets a lot of like a nice crust. Then I flip the protein over, add my basting butter, add my spices to that basting butter and just begin doing my thing, you know, basting it until the proteins cook through. Basting this spice-laced butter onto the protein actually does two things. It'll definitely coat the outside of the protein with that flavor from the spice, but also as the butter begins to brown and heat up, the spices continue toasting and fusing with that butter, sort of leaving you with this amazing sauce after the fact. And yeah, that's a really fun thing to do, so I challenge you to give that a try if you haven't already. As for dried herbs, I find that they're best when rehydrated and used in a long, slow cooking process. Right, so I wouldn't throw dried herbs into like a fresh sauce, like a pesto or chimichurri, or I wouldn't even rub them onto a steak because they would just burn off. But but I might add them to like a slow simmered stew or a tomato sauce or braise or something of that nature. You feel me? Okay, moving on. This video would not be complete without hitting on salt and pepper. Lots of different countries have lots of different like popular table condiments and spices. Uh, for whatever reason in the Western world, ours tends to be salt and pepper. Black pepper, that is. First, let's talk about salt. Salts come in many different shapes, sizes, and types, and truth be told, there could definitely be a whole entire video dedicated to this topic. 
I could talk shop for a long time about salts, but let's keep things straightforward. I use kosher salt for my all-purpose seasoning, and I like to keep my kosher salt in a container that I can reach my fingers into to get a real feel for the actual salt itself. I really do believe that being able to feel and sort of sense and touch and feel the salt is a crucial step in learning how to properly season your food. As far as kosher salt goes, I've used both Morton's and Diamond Crystal. Morton's tends to be a little bit stronger and saltier than Diamond Crystal due to its shape, but that also doesn't make it better or worse. Pick a kosher salt that works for you and get used to seasoning with it, that's really all that matters, you'll totally be fine. Then of course there are also finishing salts. Finishing salts tend to be large grain, uh, sometimes flaked salts used to sort of add extra seasoning and texture to a dish once it's been cooked, right, to a finished dish. Hence the name finishing salt. Some popular examples include Maldens, you've probably definitely seen it. Or in other parts of the world, for example in France, they have Florida Sel, which is just a sea salt that's large grain, you know, used to finish dishes for its texture and sort of its minerally flavor. Rarely if ever do you ever see anyone actually cooking with it it's really expensive so that might be a waste of money but that is the chef's choice okay and pepper is again it's a whole different beast so you know there's green peppercorns pink peppercorns white uh, black etc of the bunch, I regularly use black peppercorns. If you are like me and you're a pepper lover, I definitely recommend uh, grinding your pepper fresh if you're not doing so already. Uh, fresh ground pepper is just much more flavorful and aromatic. Like a million times more flavorful than that super dried pebbly rat poop stuff that you can buy at the store. I advise against buying pre-ground pepper, but do your thing. And in my opinion, a good pepper mill does make a bit of a difference because you can control the coarseness of it all. But a great budget alternative is just something like this, right? These cheapo glass and plastic grocery store options. Uh, it's cool because, you know, you can use all your pepper and when you're done, just unscrew it and keep loading more in. I really hope that this video helped clear up a few things regarding dried herbs, spices, seeds, and how to cook with them. If I didn't answer a question that you want an answer to, feel free to leave that in the comments below. I do my best to answer all you guys. And also, this video was not sponsored by anyone. It was not sponsored by the Spice House. I actually discovered the Spice House wandering around Milwaukee with my mom like years back. She actually introduced me to the Spice House and ever since I've sort of been using their product and they have yet to let me down. And if you're still watching, thank you so, so much. But for real, it's people like you, the curious ones, who are the reason why I'm basically still making these videos. Be sure to hit me up on the gram and or TikTok if you're into that sort of thing. And we shall meet again next week. Toodles.